Hey guys, Corey, Driveway Demons, and here we are doing an install with the SPC upper control arms and rear camera bushings. Here at Tire Pros, saying what's up to the guys. What's up, Butch? What's up, How you doing, buddy? Yeah, yeah. Can't complain. What's up, Jody? Hey, what's up to you too? Hey, what's going on? How are you? Yeah, I'm Rev. Your buddy's over there. What's up? Your buddy's over. Oh, he's here. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't see your car. Oh, okay. What up, Kyle? Finally. I didn't need. I didn't stop. I didn't have time. So big thanks to Vicky over at SPC. Best alignment products in the world, in my opinion. I love them. I'm um, getting ready to put in upper control arms that are adjustable as well as pressed bushings in the rear camber adjustment bushings for SPC. Big shout out and thank you to Vicky. And we got Mark over here who's already started on it. And uh, he's actually trying to access the back bolt. We may be able to get it, but if not, you may have to remove the entire cowl cover. You're gonna have to remove the coolant reservoir to get the front nut, which retains the bolt inside. And they actually do have uh, locking tabs, which I'll show you in a minute, that will stop it from spinning on the frame. So you really only need to put a wrench on one end. So here you can see the ball joint right here. You're gonna have to use uh, a three, uh, three arm puller on this to separate it. And then you can see the tabs in here. They lock against the frame when you actually remove the nuts that are retaining them from the engine bay. We're gonna have to remove the whole cowl. You're gonna have to take off the windshield wipers, take off the retaining clips, and pull this completely up and off, and then you'll be able to access the bolt on the other side. Here is the front. The front side nut is right there, and the rear side's way back there, so you're gonna have to take the cowl cover off, as well as you're gonna have to move the uh, reservoir. Now let's go take a look at the upper control arms from SPC and we're going to show you guys exactly how to set them up. Okay, they refer to the left side of the vehicle as the driver's side. Left front is the left side of the vehicle. Make sure on the arm it says L on the driver's side. Make sure the L is pointed up on the driver's side. And then you're going to go ahead and install the R, which is the passenger side, on the passenger side, make sure it's pointed up. When you install the ball joints, you have a camber and a caster. This is your camber adjustment. When it's actually on the alignment rack, he's gonna lift the car up and be able to move the camber. But if you're asking, how do I do the caster? I'm gonna show you guys how the caster is adjusted. Now, this is how it's gonna look on the vehicle. It's gonna be just like this, except it's gonna be underneath. If you wanna go positive or negative, you turn this in half a degree increments. That right there would be less caster. You're going half a degree negative on your caster. Let's say you got 8.7, that would give you 8.2, but if you're 8.7 in the middle, you'd be at 9.2 if you added more positive caster. So when he's aligning the vehicle, all he has to do is loosen the top screw, a retaining nut, and then rotate this for the amount of caster that he wants. And once he gets this where he wants it, he'll be able to torque everything down to spec. Right there is neutral. I'm not gonna be changing the caster as right now I'm equal on both sides. You're gonna put the washer first and then put the ridged portion down to fit in between the washer. And lock it in place. And when you torque it down, that's how it's gonna be. When you loosen it, you can slide it. If you need to adjust the caster while it's on, you just bring this nut as far back as you can. And you'll see on the bottom side, there's just enough room that he might be able to spin it. If not, you'll have to remove it. I, I just did it, it's pretty tricky. I recommend removing it. But that's how you set the upper control arms uh, to install on the vehicle. So first we're gonna see what Kyle's doing. How does it feel to have your Mustang on the alignment rack? It's about time. It's definitely about time. It's about time for sure. So you actually don't have to remove the cowl cover. All you gotta do is 
prop it up after removing the bolts to give you plenty of room to get down here and access it like Mark is doing. Uh, we just got some wood in here just to help prop it up to get the cowl cover and the sway bar out of the way. Uh, your, the PCM can just kind of sit here. Uh, it'll be pushed against the plastic piece over here. Now be sure to move the PCM connection bracket off the sway bar and over to the right. This way you have plenty of room right here to get in there. So we got plenty of room in there. They got this like weird dynamat tape that's over here covering the bolt. You can't really see down there because uh, it's dark, but right about here, like right where my hand's uh, moving right there, there's like a dynamat tape uh, that's covering the bolt. Very, very strange if you ask me, but you don't have to peel that off gently. Just use your finger and pull it off the actual retaining nut so you can get the upper control arm off. So Mark's actually over here um, getting ready to pull off the ball joint for the upper control arm right up there. Not a very hard job, but uh, he's got all the appropriate tools. Impact wrench, 18, or a breaker bar with that 18. Three arm puller. Now, if you want to whack it with a hammer, uh, Mark says you can just give it a good smack that'll pop right off. Whatever way you want to do it, doesn't matter. But they are actually coming off with these, so might as well use it, right? We opted to do the upper control arm uh, before we did the replacement of the lowers. He's locking it in place right now, and then he's going to go ahead and tighten it, and you'll hear a pop. It'll pop right out. Very little torque required to get him out. You'll hear a pop after a few good turns. It'll come right out. There it is. Okay. There we go. Got it off. There we go. The uppers are free to come out. And then we'll work our way to the back and do the bushings after we're done with this. And then it goes on the alignment rack. This is going to be great. And so you're going to have to get the coolant reservoir off and the strut cover off on the driver's side. Loosen the strut bolts to lower the coil and the strut just a little bit so you can get the bolts in. So we finally got the uh, upper ball joints up here. I'm going to show you guys right now. Uh, we got John and Mark working on it. Mark got everything all set up. John come over to help with the top. And as you'll see right here, I'm about to show you how this alignment works. By turning uh, the star-shaped washer here, which you can't quite see, but it's up there, uh, you'll actually rotate this portion, which will shift the hub assembly. So when you shift this to plus, it'll actually shift it this way, which will push uh, this back leaning it forward so basically what I'm saying is is if you add positive camber like you want to go from 9 to 9.5 you spin this star washer up top and in turn that'll lean this back and push this forward when you spin it up here when you want to do camber you loosen this nut and you bring it back and forth uh, you got about three degrees of adjustment um, when you're doing this bolt right here you torque the 35 foot-pounds and then you turn an additional 95 degrees that seats it. The top washer up here, or top nut. So when you're done with this right here, you go to the top nut and it's 120 foot pounds there. So you have 35 foot pounds on the bottom, then 95 degrees, and then you got 120 foot pounds on the top once your alignment is done. Make sure to seat that properly, otherwise it's not going to torque down. Once you're done, make sure to fully load the suspension. You want the bolts on the top of the upper control arm completely loose. You load the suspension at full weight and then you torque to 66 uh, foot-pounds on both nuts. 66 foot-pounds with the suspension fully loaded, then you are done. So you can see I got the new lower control arms in since Salerno Duane has botched it. Everything got replaced. All new bolts, all new everything on the frame. Everything looks straight. And that is what it's supposed to look like right there. That's proper. That is a proper alignment right there. There's another shot of the other side of the frame. That's how it's supposed to look. Neat, organized, torqued, and using upper control arms. You don't need to be drilling the frame. I don't recommend it. I went down that path already. This is definitely the way to go. So you can see there it says SPC on the spindle. I gotta do the rear camber bushings. So I'm about to show you guys how that's working out. The rear camber bushings 
Um, got to be pressed in. So basically you got two camera bushings. You can set it from plus 0.5 all the way to plus 1.5 and the same in the negative, up to three degrees change. And we're gonna come in here and look. This is where the flat bushing is and the step bushing. You gotta press them out with the tool they give you, which I'm about to show you. So here we go, here is the press kit right here that comes from SPC. Uh, a few of these tools are to get the old bushings out, like this one and this one. This helps to press them in and out as well. It all comes here, we're gonna show you how to do that. It's a really good kit. Push on the, on the metal part instead of just the rubber bushing. Yeah, you don't wanna just push the rubber bushing. You wanna make sure you're on the metal portion, and then we're gonna tighten that up and we're gonna push this bearing right out. All right, right out. And you can see how it's gonna come out from this side right here. It's actually getting pressed out. And it's right on the metal. And once you press this bushing out, we can put the one from SPC in next. And SPC sends you the tool if you order it with the kit. So I recommend getting this tool as SPC will send it to you if you order it at the same time. Definitely get the kit, right Mark? You're gonna need the tool if you're doing the job. So here we're setting up the actual press to press the bushing in. You want the wide, the wide portion on the right side and the flat portion on the top in order to press this bushing in. And you just line the bushing up. Once you get it lined up, you're gonna go ahead and snug it and then start torquing it down this way it'll press the bushing in just make sure you have everything lined up it's very tricky but you're gonna have to get someone to probably help you line it up straighten it out and then you'll be able to torque it right down now we've removed the other control arm you have to do both control arms we've already done the top control arm this is the step control arm you must press the bushings when you're pressing them out, they go this way. And this is the passenger tire. The back of the car is right here. You push the bushings towards the back of the car. And when you're pressing them in, you press them in from the back of the car as it's a step bushing. You do not want to press from the front where it's tapered. So we're getting ready to press the other bushing out right now. Yeah, all right. There you have it, the bushing is all the way out. That's the step bushing. Not step from the factory. That's so from the step. factory, you have a non-step bushing, but SPC has given you a step bushing that works either way, but there's two different sizes, a 39 mil and a 41 mil. Typically what that means is when you take the bushing, if you have the 41 and you put this side in, it'll be loose and you'll just have to press it a little bit until the fat side goes in. So when you actually put this press bushing in, you want the smaller side with the markings facing this way. We did the other one at 90 degrees for 0.5 degree more positive camber. You're gonna do the same thing here. You can see this mark right there is at the 90 degrees and he's gonna press it in this way. So you can imagine if this bolt was in the center and now that it's moved offset a little bit, you gotta pull this out a little bit so it lines up, which coordinates exactly with the upper control arm. So just so you guys know, you're gonna press the bushing in from the back side with the markings facing forward at 90 degrees, which will actually give you enough room to move the top of the hub out just enough to line up with the upper control arm. This way it gives you an exact uh, measurement on both so you don't bind your toe. So when you measure the 90 degrees, you're probably asking, how do we know this is actually 90 degrees right there? Well, you're not measuring 90 degrees from the ground. You're actually measuring 90 degrees parallel to the center of the control arm, right across from hole to hole on the control arm, which is dead center right here. It goes right through the spline and straight across. That's how you get your 90 degrees. It has nothing to do with the ground or where the car is. I'll basically show you the instructions on the sheet so you get a better idea. You're going right through the arm, 90 degrees, hole to hole. So when you go hole to hole, you're 90 degrees. 
that straightens it out and gives you the exact half a degree. So I should theoretically be at negative one degree exactly as I had negative 1.5 before. The uppers are on the car right now. Everything looks good. Before torquing the top of the upper control arms down to 66 foot pounds. So remember 66 foot pounds, but you must lower the vehicle on its full weight before torquing uh, the upper control arms. That's what you call preloading the suspension. You must preload the suspension before torquing. So don't forget, let the vehicle sit at its full weight once the vehicle's wheels are torqued. Once it's at full weight on the ground, you can go ahead and torque the upper control arm retaining nuts on either side and put everything right back together the way you took it off. Also very critical information, you have to make sure you preload every suspension component that has a bushing. If you have a bushing, the weight of the car must be on the bushing with the bolt not torqued. So in order to do this, you gotta preload every suspension bushing that you have in the car, whether it's upper control arms, lower control arms. You just snug it very gently, put the weight of the car on, loosen the bolts, let it sit, let it settle, then you torque everything to spec. You do not torque any bushings, the ones we're pressing in, the upper control arm, none of them until the weight of the suspension has been loaded. Now, when you actually get done putting the bushing in the way you want, you gotta torque it once the suspension's loaded. Now, once the suspension is fully loaded, you can't torque with the wheel on because you can't reach it. That's why you lock with lug nuts and larger uh, nuts, retaining nuts of any sort that you can find, and you can use wood to load the suspension on the rotor. This way you're getting the full suspension loaded and able to torque down uh, the bushings and the retaining nuts for the bushings appropriately with the suspension loaded. So as you can see here, John has figured out with me that even though 0.5 has this mark right here at 90 degrees, we're actually doing 0.25 because I only need a little bit of an adjustment. So you can use even less than what it's actually advertised at. So we've actually probably getting about a 0.2 to 0.3 adjustment as I add negative 1.2. This will put me right at negative one or negative 0.9 maybe a 0.8 just depending on the toe, uh, which if I had been using the whole half a degree, I'd be at 0.5, only half a degree negative, which is not enough. But you can do even less adjustments as you can see by the marker here. So now we're aligning the front. We've already gotten the rear dead perfect, negative 0.9 degrees, 0.10 toe, total toe 20, thrust angle zero. It's perfect. But now we're going up in here and we're adjusting the caster and camber on the front. So we're doing that right now. We're gonna loosen this nut. It's gonna allow us to slide the camber adjustment and then we're gonna have it over there on the screen. And if the caster isn't good, we can always spin uh, the star washer inside here to adjust the caster. Okay, now what do you want on the right side? Um, we could probably do like I'm thinking we could do negative one degree or 1.2 degree on the whole front. Maybe one, I don't know. One would probably be pretty good, right, for handling? Okay. okay. Now, now, I would think you'd want, well, yeah, no, you want it equal. All right, so we're talking Or we one, could do one, one two point. and call it between one, two on each side, whatever you think. Now you can see he's doing this and it's changing on the screen. Take a look. So he's able to play with the camber completely. That's what's awesome about having upper control arms that are adjustable. Now that we re-rolled the car, we're gonna adjust the caster on the passenger and the driver. Then we're gonna adjust the camber a little bit. Then we're gonna to do toe on the whole car to make sure it's good, and then we're set. So we're actually making the caster adjustment right now by spinning it, I'll show you here. We do want the full one degree on caster to get it down to nine, and the other side will be about eight, six, eight, seven, which is almost picture perfect, so we're not gonna complain there. He's gotta raise the upper control arm, then he'll be able to spin it on top of the spindle uh, and actually rotate it over to adjust the caster. Where the washer, holds the caster adjustment. You can see me moving it right now. And then it allows the bottom portion to spin. And when you actually spin that, this piece will go up, giving you more negative caster because we already have 10 and we only need nine, which is max adjustment going towards the negative. And then we'll be set. So you can see how much he turned it. 
to do the caster. Also, make sure you guys torque down the top spindle nut to 120 foot-pounds. And once you do that, you are all done once your alignment is right where you want it to be. Big thanks going over to Vicky at SPC. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. As you can see on the screen, how perfect the alignment is. We actually tweaked a little more after this and got everything perfect to zero and all the toe to 0.10. Uh, the top measurement was just the initial measurement after settling the suspension, so pay no attention to that, but hopefully this video has helped you out. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell notifications so this way you can be notified of new videos. I got so much stuff coming, guys. I have a Scat Pack charger and Daytona charger charger review coming. I also have a best sedan in America review coming between the Genesis G80 and the Dodge Charger SRT. And I have the Jeep SRT review coming as well as the Durango SRT. So a lot of stuff coming. And I just uploaded the Mustang 5.0 review. So I have a ton of stuff coming. Remember, be sure to subscribe and share the channel. And until the next video, remember, have fun and be safe.